everyone, and uh, welcome back to my uh, World of Tanks Xbox 360 guide. Um, today we're going to be talking about the AMX 50 Fosh 155. Uh, so, um, let's talk about uh, getting to this tank uh, a little bit. Um, it's not too bad of a grind. The uh, tank destroyers aren't too great until you get about to tier 7 to tier 8 uh, then you um, you know aren't as squishy but you're still pretty squishy um, not much armor on these uh, not much armor on the tanks at the beginning considering you're going up against tier 10 tanks once you get to about tier 8, uh, tier 7 you play against tier 9s, but most of those tier 9s are a problem as well. But it, if those tanks, the tier 7 to tier 8, if those tanks can get into some pretty good matchmaking um, as being top tier, those tanks are pretty strong. Um, but uh, it's not too bad of a grind. Um, you definitely. Um, those tanks don't have a high alpha damage. Uh, it replaces its high alpha damage for rate of fire on the French line uh, of tank destroyers. Um, so um, the AMX 50 Fosh 155 is an auto loader tank destroyer. Um, and it hits hard. Uh, it's not like a Wolfenträger Ulti 100 um, where it gets six shells and clip and does around 500 to 600 a average damage. Uh, but uh, this tank does more damage in a clip. Um, but uh, when you unlock this tank, um, no research is required, uh, everything is unlocked. Um, what you're going to get on this tank is a 155 millimeter gun, devastating. Uh, it's the uh, 155 millimeter ACSA 5.8. Uh, this tank is somewhat fairly quick for a tank destroyer. It has a tier 9 engine, it's a sorter. Um, get the tier 10 radio. It's the uh, SCR 619, of course. And um, the suspension is tier 10 as well. So everything is uh, everything on this tank is tier 10, except for the engine. The engine is tier 9. Uh, but this tank can move fairly quickly uh, going forward. Um, so that's uh, good news. Uh, some other tanks are kind of slow. That's what was great about this tank. This tank here can get into some very good positions very very quickly because of the speed and you can hold down some positions a little bit faster a little bit better until backup arrives um, let's talk about the hit points of this tank uh, tank destroyers you know they, they have low hit points usually around 2000 or so unless it's the Germans uh, but uh, the French this tank in particular has low hit points. You only have 18. You only have 1,850 uh, hit points, guys, in this tank. So you have to be very, very careful with your hit points. Um, let's talk about signal range. 750 meter signal range. Um, speed limit, like I said, 50 kilometers per hour, guys. This tank can book it going forward and just move it around. 50 kilometers per hour. Uh, your speed limit backward is going to be about 13 kilometers per hour. Um, let's talk about the weight of this tank. Uh, the tank weighs 57.6 tons. Um, when uh, fully loaded, uh, it'll weigh up to about 59.56 ton. Load limit is what you can have. Uh, let's talk about the crew of this tank. Uh, you get four crew members. You get a commander, a gunner, a driver, and a loader and your commander will act as your radio operator. 
Um, let's talk about the whole armor. Um, the whole armor is 180 millimeters in the front, 40 millimeters on the side, 40 millimeters on the rear. Um, very, you were a very, very squishy tank on the sides and in the rear. Uh, 40 millimeters is not that thick at all. You, if you even angle, if you even angle like this, uh, there's a probably a good chance that uh, the uh, shell will go through your tank. But um, it also has a good chance to ricochet. Uh, but uh, any more, any less, uh, it's probably gonna penetrate. 40 millimeters is not that uh, thick. Uh, but uh, about right here right here is, is, is a pretty good angling uh, if you're reloading and you're stuck out in the open um, move your tank wiggle your tank back and forth don't let them get a clear shot at you um, now 100 millimeters in the front now this is a very very sloped front um, there's nothing that's going to go through really this frontal part uh, with the sloping, uh, and the gun mantle covers pretty much the uh, almost front part of the tank. Um, you do have a weak lower lower part, lower glacius, the lower part of the tank, but this tank is very heavily armored in the front. Uh, very, very heavily armored in the front, and nothing's really going to be able to pin you from the front. Um, now, you do have two giant commander view ports uh well you have a machine gun turret right here weak point and you have the viewport the t on top uh which is a weak point but the t is not as big as target as what you guys think it is uh see on top it's just this square little piece right here that connects the t to the tank uh the parts that extend out from the t those are no hit boxes guys so it's just basically this little square part, and it's hidden from where the enemy is. They, they pretty much have to hit the T dead center. They have to aim directly in the middle at this tank. Uh, because if they aim at a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, they will miss this commander hatch or your viewport here. Uh, so it's just this little box in the back that is the hitbox. So we're going to take a look at the rear show you guys how big that actually is. It's about the size of the machine gun port, really. Or the, the machine gun turret. It's about the size of the machine gun turret. So, um, it's not too bad. Um, let's talk about the engine power. You get 1,000 horsepower engine, guys. Uh, very, very good. Uh, horsepower to weight ratio is 17.36 horsepower to ton ratio. Um, so it can do a little bit of, uh, it has a, some get up and go to it. Uh, the transverse speed is about 30 degrees per second. So it can transverse somewhat okay compared to other tank destroyers, but it's not great. Uh, tanks will still, medium and light tanks will still be able to get around you and flank you but you, know, you have a better opportunity if you can get your if you're getting a circle to start backing your tank up and try and find somewhere to back your butt up against the wall and it'll prevent them from being able to circle you uh, so um, let's talk about the fire chance in this tank this tank has a 15 percent chance of getting set on fire from an engine fire um, which is pretty good. That's below average. Um, the average engine fire in a tank is about 20%. So it's below average, 15%, which is great. Um, let's talk about view range. Uh, the view range in this tank is 380 meter view range. Um, Yeah, 300 and view, 340 meter view range. Uh, yeah. 
Check on that. Uh, but uh, the gun, the gun traverse. The gun traverse uh, traverses at 26 degrees per second. Um, the, to let you guys know, like what I mean is moving the gun from side to side moves at 26 degrees per second. Uh, so the gun somewhat moves all right. Uh, view range is 400 meters. It has a 400 meter view range, guys. Uh, But um, let's talk about the uh, traverse arc. Uh, when, since we were talking about moving the gun from side to side, uh, from side to side, um, basically what you're going to get is you're going to get six degrees to this side, six degrees to that side. That is one of the downfalls of this tank. It doesn't have a very good tra traverse arc, guys. Um, so you're going to have to move your tank, rotate your tank. And uh, traverse your tank a lot uh, with moving targets, and that aim time is not fast, guys. The aim time on this tank is pretty uh, slow. Uh, but let's talk about the damage of this tank. Uh, this tank does 750 average damage from a standard AP shell, and if you're gonna fire high explosive. Uh, you, it's going to be able to do uh, 1,100 uh, average damage, and uh, also with your heat is uh, 750 uh, hit points. So um, this is a pretty devastating uh, little uh, gun here. Um, it does get armor piercing, as I said, heat and high explosive shells. Um, the high explosive shells does a splash radius of 3.78 meters. So basically, if you miss a target, you miss. It doesn't really have any splash to it. Uh, let's talk about the penetration capabilities of this gun. Uh, with your armor piercing rounds, you're going to get 293 millimeters of armor penetration, guys. That's plenty of armor penetration to go through just about anything. Uh, even the frontal part of a... Uh, Uh, Jack Panzer E100's uh, mantle, not 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 the gun mantle, but the uh, the front plate. Uh, if you aim low enough, um, heat gives you 395 millimeters of penetration, guys. Uh, that's that's a lot of penetration right there. And your high explosive rounds don't really have much penetration. 90 millimeters of uh, penetration, um, but since this tank is an auto loader, um, I would not recommend uh, loading any high explosive rounds in this tank at all. Um, maybe three. If you're going to load high explosive, maybe three. Maybe it's you and a Wolfenträger off E100 that's uh, left on the battlefield. Um, and if that Wolfenträger off E100 hasn't taken any hit points or hasn't lost any health, um, uh, your three shells, your standard 750 average damage, whether you're firing heat or armor piercing, is not going to kill that Wolfenträger off E100. That Wolfenträger can kill you if all of his shots can. Uh, so you're going to need those high explosives. So I would, uh, I would uh, load. I would carry at least three high explosive rounds just in case of that situation ever arises uh, because uh, you're going to be able to do 1,100 average damage. Three high explosive rounds into a Waffenträger off E100's turret will kill him with this tank. So um, just to be on the safe side, I would carry at least three. Um, let's talk about the shell speeds. Of the um, shells, uh, armor piercing and the heat are going to travel at 826 meters per second, and also your heat is going to travel at 826 meters per second. So all of the rounds travel at the same amount, the exact same amount of speed. This tank does not get armor, or armor piercing composite rounds, which fire so much faster. 
Um, but let's talk about the damage per minute of this tank. Uh, this tank is capable of dishing out 2,250 hit points per minute uh, with armor piercing and heat. Um, it is capable of doing 3,300 hit points per minute with high explosive, but that's not going to happen considering we only get 90 millimeters of penetration. Um, let's talk about the rate of fire of this gun. Uh, this, uh, this tank fires off three rounds per minute, guys. Three rounds per minute. Um. Which is a little bit faster than um, most other tank destroyers. Uh, if you're looking at the Death Star, for example, uh, it pretty much can only fire about two rounds per minute. Uh, same thing with the um, Jag PNG 100 uh, and uh, the T110E3. Maybe the T110E3 may be able to fire off three rounds per minute, but I don't really necessarily. I don't think so. Um, it, it's pretty close to three, um, but this tank, uh, the problem with this tank is it's long reload time. Um, your reload time in this tank is going to be, um, 50 seconds, guys, about 50 seconds is you're going to be your reload time, but you're saying... Uh, but the, the size, the size of the clip... You get three rounds in a clip. That's why it's capable of firing three rounds per minute. You get three rounds in a clip, three shells. Um, now, once you expend those three shells that are in your clip, it's going to take you 50 seconds to reload. Uh, the reload time in between firing those shells is about five seconds, guys. So it's not like you're in a Waffen Traeger off E100 or T57 Heavy or an AMX 50B or all these other autoloaders you guys have played where you're just capable of BAM! Bam, bam, bam. This tank does not do that. Uh, it's a 155 millimeter gun, guys. So it's going to take a little bit to reload a shell. It takes five seconds in between the shells. So you're going to fire a shot. Five seconds, fire a shot. Five seconds, fire a shot. But basically, the point of this is, is you're going to be able to kill a tank before they kill you and so forth and support your team. This tank can take out wounded tanks very, very quickly. Um, let's talk about the accuracy of the gun. 0.36 meter accuracy. Aim time is 3 seconds. That's why I said, guys, the aim time on this tank is atrocious. This is bad. 3 second aim time and the traverse arc on the gun is not great. Um, talk about gun elevation and gun Depression, uh, gun depression, 5 degrees of gun depression, so you basically have no gun depression to speak of. 5 degrees is horrible. Um, pretty much what you're looking at on the tank is what you're going to get as gun depression. It does aim down a little bit. Um, it does get 12 degrees of gun elevation. Um, now your ammo capacity is 30 rounds. I have expended all 30 rounds in my tank before. Uh, it's capable. You, you can do it. Um, let's talk about the camo values of this tank. Um, well, this is just out in the open. This is hiding behind any bushes, buildings, or anything like that. Uh, your camo value while stationary is going to be about 17%. Um, while in motion, while moving, you're going to only have about 11% camo value. And uh, when firing, it's going to drop to about 3.9%. 3.90%. Uh, so almost 4% when firing, and not bad, so you do still have some camo value while firing. Uh, you can get those camo values up by actually putting camouflage on your tank, or even a camo net. Uh, even having camouflage skill. Um, let's talk about the battle performance of this tank for average players, average people playing the game. Um, accuracy, about 77%. Uh, win rate, about 48%. 0.5 percent uh, damage dealt about 2,135 damage dealt per battle uh, kills per battle you're at least gonna get a kill in a battle in this tank guys uh, no kill you didn't have a very good game I guess 
That's not necessarily true. I mean, you could do like 10,000 damage and not kill a tank. I've done that before in this tank, uh, so. Um. So, uh. Let's talk about, um. Maybe, uh, let's talk about some supplies on the tank. Um, your uh, shells are going to cost you, your armor piercing rounds are going to cost you uh, 1,560 silver. Um, your uh, high explosives are going to cost you 1,090, so pretty cheap. And um, your heat is going to cost you 6,800. Um, I don't load any heat. I feel like I don't need it. Um, let's talk about consumables. Um, you get a small repair kit. Small or small repair kit is probably a good idea. Uh, you could even go large repair kit. It is squishy on the sides, on the top, and on the rear. So if artillery were to hit you, it could take out multiple modules and mess up your tank pretty good. So a large repair kit wouldn't be bad. I went with a small repair kit. Um. You want a uh, small first aid kit. Um, I hardly ever have multiple crew members taken out in this tank, guys. So um, you don't really need a large repair kit. Small repair kit will do just fine. Um, now, um, I would go with strong coffee or a manual fire extinguisher. Um, this tank hardly ever really gets set on fire. You only have 1,850 hit points, guys, so having an automatic fire extinguisher is not too great of an idea for this tank in particular. Um, but uh, yeah, strong coffee or manual fire extinguisher would be a great idea. Um, let's talk about the equipment that you should put on this tank. Um, equipment you will need is going to be improved ventilation class 3, which is going to give you 5% to all your crew skills. Uh, you're going to want an enhanced gun lane drive, 10% aiming speed. It has a 3 second aim time, guys, so the, you want to get that down as much as possible, and this will help with that. And uh, binocular telescope, it's going to give you 25% view range uh, for uh, spotting uh, vehicles, guys, so. Uh, you, you could even maybe go for a camo net, but, you know, you, this tank is a support tank. Uh, you want those binocular telescopes, guys. Trust me. Um, this tank already has pretty good camo values. Uh, camouflage net, uh, not really a necessity. Um, but uh, now with that out of mind, uh, let's talk about uh, how to play this tank, really. Um... This tank really excels at long distances. Um, it really, really does. Um, you don't want to be up close. Uh, you fire off all three of your rounds and you're pretty much done. Uh, it's going to take you 50 seconds to reload this tank. And if you get caught out in the open with or it's going to be bad news. So, you know... This tank here, it really is just a wait, sit, and camping type of tank. If you can't sit and wait and camp um, and support your team in the right locations, um, this is not the tank for you. Yes, this tank will ricochet shots. It is very heavily armored in the front. Up, These weak points on top of this, the gun and the viewport become very, very big targets for tanks that don't have very good acti, such as 100 and stuff like that. I, I went up against one of these tanks in my U100, and at a distance, this is not a fun tank to go up against at all. Um, but with that in, I'm going to leave you with uh, a repick, me too. Um, so, uh... We will be getting to those, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this part of the video.